So in this video, we're going to cover four different classes of organic compounds. The first we're going to cover is called alcohols, the second are ethers, the third are aldehydes, and the fourth are ketones. Um, each one of them has one thing in common, their functional group has an oxygen in it. All right, so the functional group for all these guys has an oxygen, it's just where the oxygen is and what is attached to that oxygen. And each of those compounds has unique characteristics. Okay, so we're gonna start with alcohols. Uh, what do we need to know about alcohols? Well, their functional group is known as a hydroxyl. Now this is not like they're not bases, okay? Hydroxyl is not a hydroxide, okay? It's not a polyatomic ion. It's attached covalently to a carbon. And alcohols are, have, are neutral in water. They don't, they're not acids or bases, okay? They are very soluble because, because of this OH right here, they're kind of like water, and so they can H-bond to water. So they're all very soluble in water. They're like water, and they like dissolves like. Um, the last thing you should know about them is they are all toxic to some degree or other. Okay, there's drinking alcohol, which is what's found in like wine and things like that. That's ethanol. Um, but they're all toxic. Some of them are more toxic than others. Some will cause blindness, some will cause kidney failure and death. Um, but when ingested, they are all toxic. All right, so let's talk about the nomenclature of alcohols. Now, the good thing is they give you an example here. See, the, the example they give you is one propanol. Now, the one tells you where the hydroxyl is located. And again, you have this prop, which tells you you have a three carbon molecule. So one propanol would be three carbons in a row. I'm trying to draw it down here. And you would number the carbons. And on the first carbon, there would be a hydroxyl. Now, you can draw it up, down, and to the side. But I'm going to do something interesting here, okay? I'm not going to draw a dash between the O and the H. And the reason why I'm not going to bother doing that is because when you try to draw these things and there's lots of things around, it's just because it doesn't fit, okay? Everybody understands there's a single bond between the O and the H because hydrogen only makes single bonds. So this would be one propanol, and I'm going to put little dashes here to represent where all the other H's will be located. That's one propanol. An isomer of that would be this one right here. Now this is the exact same thing. It's three carbonyl, car it's got three carbons, so it's a propanol. And notice the ending here, the suffix, O-L. All alcohols end in O-L, right? And what they do is they put a number in the front to tell you where the, the hydroxyl is located. So for this one, it's located in the middle carbon. So this would be 2-propanol. Now, sometimes you don't need a number. If there's only one possible place you could be, like for this one right here. This is 2-carbon, so this is eth. The, pref the, the prefix is eth, and it still gets the suffix of anol for an alcohol. And it's on this carb here. Now, the problem is this. If you put it on this carbon, it's the first. If you put it on this one, it's also the first. So you don't have to put the one in front of here. But if you do, you won't lose points. But you don't need it. And the one up, now this is the one that's found in things like wine and other alcohol beverages. All right? Um, this one right here is called methanol. All right? Um, and it's called methanol because it has one carbon. So this is methanol. So in all alcohols, the naming system basically consists of this. The prefix is the number of carbons, the suffix is A-N-O-L, and the number out front, will out front will indicate the position of the hydroxyl. Um, that's really all I have to say about alcohol. It's very short. Um, one quick thing right here. Um, if there's more than one hydroxyl, um, you have to do something else. I'm going to do this one right now. So this one right now would be hex for six carbons. So hexan, watch what I do there, diol. I know it's silly, but this di means there's two hydroxyls, and then I would have to number the positions out front. So this would be this this would be the first carbon again. I'm starting with the lowest possible number, and this would be two, and this would be three. So it'd be two comma three hexandiol. That's really all you need to know about alcohols is how to name them or how to draw them. So if I say I've got to draw, you know, uh, four dash, you know, octanol, I'm going to draw eight carbons. And on the fourth carbon, and I'm going to put on the carbon number four, I'm going to draw one little OH like that on. And that's pretty much it. And by the way, you know, um, this example right here, these two right here are once again using, these are isomers of each other. Okay, so just be aware of that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do are ethers. Now, ethers are basically two chains of carbon connected by an oxygen in the middle. And they are formed by the dehydration of what are called primary alcohols. Now, primary alcohols are ones in which the hydroxyl is on the number one carbon. That's how you can remember that. So number one is like prime, right? Um, so watch how this works out. So an ether, 
All right, so ethers are formed by the dehydration of two primary alcohols. So here you have two primary alcohols on the left, okay? And so this is a, uh, this is methanol because it has one carbon, and this is one, two, three. This has three carbons, so this is one propanol. And what happens is, you learn about this in the living environment. Um, an H comes off one of them, and an OH comes off the other, and that's why it's dehydration. Those two come together to make this water over here. And then the oxygen that likes to make two bonds will then connect the, f the first chain to the second chain. So what you're gonna end up having here are two products, water from the dehydration, the removal of water, and you get this carbon here with the three hydrogens, and this one oxygen here, and the three carbons on the right. And what's really happened here is simply this. The water's been removed, and now the, the, the oxygen serves as a link okay, between the two chains. And the names of these are kind of fun. So this is going to be called methyl, propyl, ether. Oh, prop for the three carbon. I'm sorry, I messed up. It's not methylpropyl. I guess it is correct. I messed up. Wow. Teacher messed up in his brain. So propyl means three carbons and methyl means one carbon. So you have meth, and it's usually done in alphabetical order. So if there's two of them, the E's come before this or something like that. So M's come before P. So it's methyl propyl ether. All right. So for now, if there are two of the same like this one, this says two carbons on the left and two carbons on the right, then this thing is going to be called diethyl ether. All right, and it would be made from two alcohols. So if I were to fill in the, the reactants over here, there'd be one alcohol over here with a hydroxyl like this, so an ethanol, reacting with another ethanol. All right, and you would take this out and this out, and you'd make some water, and you'd be, and you'd have two carbons, oxygen, two carbons, diethyl ether. Just to make sure we're clear on this, okay? So the nomenclature system, right? So this is methyl ethyl ether, meaning there's one carbon on one side and oxygen, two carbons on the other. If there's three carbons on both sides, what will we call? Propyl, propyl ether or dipropyl ether. If there's three carbons and two carbons, then you've got, this is an ethyl and this is a propyl. So this will be called ethyl propyl ether. So ethers are formed from the dehydration of primary alcohols where the water is removed. You get two hydrocarbon chains connected by an oxygen. By the way, ethers were early, um, early anesthetics. Um, they were used by anesthesiologists like, basically to knock people out uh, in the 1800s. Um, fortunately, if, they were, uh, if too much was used, people would die. So they've switched to other things, but it was one of the first anesthetics that would allow you to knock somebody out and do operations on them while they were unconscious, if you were very, very careful about how much you gave them. All right, two other compounds uh, that are important are aldehydes and ketones. Both of them have the same thing on. They have a double bonded oxygen bonded to a carbon. Now what that does is it cuts down the number of hydrogens because carbons are only gonna make four bonds and they've already made two to the oxygen. Now, the most, the most commonly known one that people have sometimes heard of is formaldehyde, which is methanal. Notice the ending, A-N-A-L, like this is an alkane with an aldehyde at the end. And what this means is that the double bond O is at the end of the molecule. So if you have like this, one, two, three carbons with a double bond oxygen here, H, 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 and one here, this is going to be called prop and al. And you're going to notice something. There's no number here. And the reason why that doesn't have to be a number is because, by definition, aldehydes have their double bonded oxygen at the end of the molecule. So if I were to draw like octanal, I'd have eight carbons. And at the end, on the last carbon, there would be a double bonded oxygen. That's pretty much all I have to say about aldehydes. Ketones, okay, have their double bond oxygen somewhere in the middle of the chain. So in aldehydes, they are at the end of the chain. In ketones, they're somewhere in the middle. And because they're somewhere in the middle, they're going to need a number. So if I'm doing, and the most common example of this is, is propanone, which is acinone. Now for propanone, you don't need a number because if it's a ketone, the double bond oxygen has to be in the middle, and there's only one middle carbon when you have three carbons. So this is, this is basically propanone, which is also known as acetone, which is what you use for your nails or to remove nail polish. It's really nail polish remover, but it's the solvent that evaporates when you're putting your nail polish on. All right? If, let's say, you're dealing with something like, you know, um, uh, let's say, 3-octadone, 
In that particular case, you can have like eight carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you find the third carbon and you put the double bond oxygen. Now notice, this carbon is not gonna have any hydrogens on it. So when you, if you were to draw a condensed formula for this, it'd be like CH3, there'd be two hydrogens on this one, but this carbon here would just have an oxygen and nothing else attached to it. Okay, so for ketones, one thing you're gonna notice is the carbon that has the oxygen on it has no hydrogens attached because it's gonna be in the middle, it's gonna to have to have one bond to one carbon, one to another one, and then it's gonna have this double bond going out to the oxygen. So there'll be no hydrogens attached to the carbon with the double bond oxygen in ketones. That's it, okay? And we'll move on to organic acids and esters and stuff uh, in the next video.